What's up Guardians, welcome to another Destiny gameplay video. In this video I'm going to be talking about these moments where you have to make a play. Where you're forced to either make a play or lose a round for your team in the Trials of Osiris. A lot of people see it as like a switch that you flip on that suddenly makes you go into clutch mode. When the reality of it is that there's a lot of strategy involved in making things happen fast in these moments where you're last man standing or you have to make a play otherwise. So here's a good example of that type of strategy. Here's an instance where this blade dancer activates his arc blade. Now at this moment, I you instantly have to start thinking about what the most strategic option is. So I actually tell my teammate, bring him to bridge because he's focused on KJ Hovey, who is a very competent player. So as soon as I tell him bring him to bridge, he knows exactly what to do and does it swimmingly. Pulls him straight to me, and in those tight spaces, you're able to hit fire your sniper rifle, your shotgun, whatever it may be, and still be accurate when uh, blade dances are in these tight situations because they're hard to hit otherwise, blinking around, lunging around. But if you can get straight in front of them in a bottleneck and taking them out, it's really not that hard to do. Now this was a fun clutch round, and here's how it broke down. Started out with going on uh, 2v3 here with my teammate Rusty. So we get one orb down, so we think, hey, we're in a good spot now. All we have to do is some orb control, and we'll be set. So sure enough, they come for the revive, and I'm able to snipe this guy as he's sliding. But here's where the problem happens. The third guy throws a grenade. It's an Axion Bolt Seeker. Forces us to eat the grenade or run. So we have to back off, and... Uh, at this point, if you look down in the lower left, that gave them just enough time to get all the revives they need to go back to three on two. So we're forced to go a little bit clutch here because now we're getting pushed. And so what I end up doing is uh, kind of forcing these guys into a bottleneck. As they pursue us, they come straight through that choke point up on bridge, and I'm able to get two easy snipes as they come out. So the thing about luring people into bottlenecks is that there's just not a lot of room for them to maneuver. So that means target acquisition for you is pretty easy to do. Now at this point for the final guy, I sight in and I have to make some compensation here and quickly sweep over right on top of his noggin and get the shot. Oh, you're still here. Now in these moments where you find yourself last man standing and you have to make a play going 1v3, uh, one of the best assets that you have going for you is your mobility. You, you're going to want to move around the map and try and bait guys into coming at you one at a time. So here I bait one guy over, I miss the headshot, and unfortunately my grenade doesn't wrap him up. So I decide, okay, well let's just reset. I move on to the next special ammo box, pull out my sniper rifle, and note that I set my sights at about head level on the bridge. That way, when he comes around the corner out of that bottleneck, Making that shot's not a difficult thing to do. So now I'm in uh, orb guarding mode. You want to control this orb. So I look down another bottleneck, another choke just point, makes for an easy go. snipe because you know exactly where he's going to be. Now it's just a one on one. And this guy is in the air, which makes him easy to snipe. So mobility is one of the best things you've got going for you. Here's an instance where I find myself suddenly last guardian standing. And look at the radar, they are closing in on me from all sides, so I just need to get the heck out of dodge. And so I just start running and instantly take a hard right to put some visual cover in between me and my pursuers. And I'm leading them on this goose chase, and then at this point I pull a 180 and note the placement of the firebolt grenade. I put it directly in between these two guys so we can get the guy on the left, and can get the guy who's pursuing from the corridor on the right. And it does exactly that. It hits both of them. You can see the initial 93 damage proc on both opponents. And now I'm just trying to outgun them. I know they have no shields. It's only going to take one well-placed burst to finish these guys off. So I make it happen. And now we're back to a one-on-one, -on -one, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to grab some special. I'm going to control these orbs for a second. Maybe I'm going to push up on this guy. And I miss my second burst, it hits the stone. And so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, go one-on-one -on -one with a 100 point blank, or I see he blinks past me to go get the revive. So at this point, if I pursue him, by the time I get there, he's already going to have an opponent revived. So we're just going to reset the entire round at this point. So I go ahead and revive both my teammates. We're back to a three-on-three. -three. It's like nothing ever happened. And now I'm just peeking up over these stairs to have some cover as I gun down the first guy melee kill the second guy 
and it gives me an overshield with the Scorch Melee, finish off the last kill, and we end up winning the round. So sometimes you may just have to do a hard reset on the round, stop pushing, and then end up going back for the revise, and just going back to a 3v3. So here's an instance of a time where I got uncomfortably close with a loadout where I have a scout rifle and a sniper rifle equipped. So I'm not really set for close quarters combat at this point. But I get revived in a hot situation with a hunter with a shotgun. And then I'm forced to kind of make some plays happen here. And fortunately get that quick scope out of the air on the hunter as he's falling. So I blink away. Here's how, how it goes. I blink away. This guy can't move for a second. So I toss the grenade on him. I prioritize him. Now, uh, this guy blinks up for my teammate, and I end up just getting that quick scope out of the air. And that's something that only comes with practice as you start to get a feel for where the, the reticle is on the screen. And uh, once you get that feeling, especially with a sniper rifle, that can just make you incredibly deadly, especially in these clutch moments. Now here's another example of mobility playing out for me. I basically just do a full circle and run the boards on these guys. So they're aggroed on my teammates. It makes it a little bit easier for me to mop up kills. But mobility isn't just good for repositioning and flanking. It's also good for disorienting. So here's an instance where I'm, I'm using blink, not with a shotgun, but actually with a sniper rifle. And I'm doing it in such a way that I can disorient my opponents so that I can have the upper hand. They can't get a beat on me. And that frees me up to do some meleeing, and unfortunately, Mida just from the hip is not that accurate, so I missed almost all those shots. And lastly, when you're going one on three, take advantage of those moments where the entire enemy team is in the same choke point. Sniper rifles are fantastic for getting multi kills in tight spaces. So unfortunately, I missed that third sniper, else that would have been a, a pretty wicked triple kill. But uh, I'm able just to move around that pillar and reposition myself and finish off the last guy. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you. Hopefully when you find yourself in these scenarios where you have to make a clutch play, you can keep a level head and really pick apart the situation strategically and quickly and turn the tables on your opponents. Thanks guys.